I did a video recently all about how I invest my own money. There's a link to that video in the description. But in that video, I mentioned that I've been overpaying my mortgage. And there were lots of comments all along similar lines, such as, why are you paying off your mortgage? Wouldn't that money be better off invested? Call yourself a financial advisor? Plus, some guy said I look over 60, which was nice. So let me address the time-honored question. What makes sense? Overpaying your mortgage or investing? Hi and welcome back to the channel. My name is Pete Matthew. I'm a chartered financial planner based in the UK and I've been putting up videos on YouTube for more than 10 years, giving you everything you need to know and everything you need to do to secure your financial future. So you've got some spare money, either as a lump sum or regularly each month. Should you put that extra money towards getting rid of your mortgage more quickly or should you invest it? I wanna give you the numbers and the rationale behind this so that you're actually informed about it so that you can make a good decision for yourself. But before we do that, as you're watching this, if you find the video useful, please do hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. It helps the almighty YouTube algorithm to put these videos in front of more people so that they can understand their finances better. Thank you for your help. Firstly, let me just correct myself here. Before I begged you for a subscription just now, I asked, should you overpay your mortgage or should you invest? Now, regular viewers will know that I hate the word should. With personal finance, there are actually very few things that are non-negotiable. There's never really a perfect path through every decision regarding your finances. And for most of us, we live in a free country, so we can actually do whatever we like with our own money. So let's talk instead about what you could do. And let's get to the two sides, the two factors of this decision, so that you can weigh them for yourself and apply them to your unique circumstances. So factor number one is maths. Mathematics, math for our American cousins. Let's say for the sake of example here that you find yourself in the great position of having 250 pounds per month extra that you can decide what to do with. Let's also assume that you have a 200,000 pound repayment mortgage with 20 years left to pay. Assuming two and a half percent interest on that, your monthly payment will be 1,060 pounds per month. And the total interest you'll pay over the 20 year term of the mortgage is 54,380 pounds. That's assuming that the interest rate stays the same. Now, if you overpay by 250 pounds each month, you'll pay off the mortgage four years, eight months early and save 13,383 pounds in interest. Now, over that period, you would have paid 46,000 extra into your mortgage to save that 13,383 pounds in interest. But that's our figure for comparison. Now let's say you pay that 250 pounds per month into a stocks and shares ISA and you get a fairly conservative 5% per year return on it after all costs. By the way, I did a video recently called Pension versus ISA and I assumed a 6% return in my examples there. And I had a ton of comments slagging me off for using an unrealistic return goes to show just how we really need to improve financial education because these people presumably thought that a cash ISA was the only option because they were quoting figures to me of 0.1%. A 6% return has been achieved by even a bog standard balanced investment fund over the past 10 years. So I think it's a realistic assumption. But this time we're going even more doable with a 5% return. And over the 15 years, four month timeline that you would have paid off your mortgage early, your 46,000 pounds of total monthly extra investing would have amassed 69,236 in total, or just over a 50% return over that period. This is the issue when you're starting from below zero. In other words, when you're in debt, your 250 pound per month mortgage overpayment is reducing the interest you pay. So it's making your mortgage company worse off but it's making you better off only to the degree that you pay less to other people. You're not really building wealth for yourself. Now that's still a decent outcome. And you could say obviously that you own your property more quickly, you're building equity more quickly. So it is making you better off in that regard. But the fact remains that while interest rates remain low on mortgages, you are almost always gonna be better off by investing any spare money that you might have. It's fairly simple maths. You save interest on your mortgage by overpaying, but generally at a lower rate than you may gain by investing. But there's a very big but coming. Can you guess what it is? 
That big but is the second factor at play when we're deciding whether to overpay our mortgage or invest, and that is emotion. Now don't click away, this is really, really important, more important than the numbers in my view. Now I can hear some of you asking, what emotion has got to do with money? Surely it's all about the numbers, maths for the win and all that. Well, if we were cold, unthinking machines, then that would definitely be true. But we're not. And over the 20 odd years of my career, I can tell you that my biggest challenge has been managing the emotions and behaviors of my clients, sometimes very experienced investors. So how does emotion apply here? Well, we need to understand that when we're using assumed growth rates for investment, like I did in my example earlier, we know that those assumptions will be wrong. Investment returns cannot be guaranteed. They can't even be expected. We literally have no idea what will happen. But we do know that investments do not return in a straight line. They bounce around all over the place. In March 2020, when the COVID-19 pandemic really took hold, markets around the world plummeted by 30 or 40% in only about six weeks. Now they recovered fairly quickly, but still it speaks to a really key point in our overpay mortgage versus investment debate. Are you ready? Here it is. Saving interest by overpaying is a guaranteed return. Investing offers no such guarantees. And faced with that choice, the different perspectives of different people come to the fore. So when I said that I've overpaid my mortgage, people asked why as a financial advisor I would do that. Surely you know better, they said. But the answer quite simply is that I'm married and Joe really likes the idea of getting rid of the mortgage more quickly. So out of love for her, I'm doing everything I can to get rid of the mortgage as quickly as possible. It might not make mathematical financial sense, but looking out for my wife's preferences has other compensations. Throughout history, people have been prepared to accept lower returns if it means that those returns are known, guaranteed. And exactly the same thing applies in this case. So what should you do? Well, remember there is no should. Do what feels best for you. And so you must know yourself. Are you likely to be concerned by wildly fluctuating markets? If not, then maybe you might err towards investing any spare money you have. Are you the kind of person who likes to reduce debt fairly quickly? Do you long to be debt free? Well, if so, then you know what to do. But as ever folks, this decision need not be binary. It's not just an either or thing. You can do a bit of both. Be intentional about the decision and review it regularly. So whenever you get a pay rise or a bonus or an overtime check, decide what you're gonna do with the extra money. Decide together if you're in a couple. But let's be a little bit less dogmatic about what the right thing to do is. Remember, there is no should. Okay, thanks for watching. I hope the video gave you some food for thought. If so, remember to smash the like button and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this. Thank you so much for being here. I really appreciate you and I'll see you in the next video.